Mark 2 verse 1. Bible says, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noised that he was in the house. I believe the pastor told us they've been several calling him from a ways off, saying, What in the world's going on? I'm going to tell you what's going on. It's been noised abroad that God's on the hill here in Florence, Kentucky at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Oh, my soul. Verse number two, and straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as, as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Amen. Can I stop right here and say preaching always work? Yeah. I love good singing. Yeah. I can't sing worth a lick. But I love good singing. Yeah. I love good testifying. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you none of it will ever substitute some good preaching. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what, having to follow the pastor and his little remarks is tough on me. Yeah. I'm talking about some good preaching. Hey, God honors that preaching. He always had and he always will. There's no need to apologize for it because that's what God ordained. He called us to preach the Word. My Lord, i got to get to my message. Preacher, you flag me down for go over 20 minutes. Where was I at? Verse number 3. And they come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. He spoke that to me one night back in 1980. On that Wednesday evening at High Point Baptist Church, a little long-haired hippie boy didn't know how to pray. Just said, God, if you'll take me like I am, I'll sure take you. And immediately he spoke to me. My, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Lord have mercy. Verse number six. There's so much liberty up here. I'm out to get you. Go get one of them camel soup cans we've talked about. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they, that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately, Amen. immediately he arose. Right then. Changed his life. Right then. Said he took up his bed, he went forth before them all insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we never seen it Amen. on this fashion. That's about the only way I know to describe what's been going on around here, Miss Jackie. We just ain't never seen it like this. I've never seen God move like He's a moving now. I mean, I've seen a taste of it here and there. But I'm going to tell you, when you come to the house of God and the people fellowship for 20 minutes and they ain't gossiping, they loving on one another, telling, boy, I hope you had a good week, and hugging one another's neck, saying, you know, it's good to see you. <laughs> I tell you, it's good to see me too sometimes. I'm glad to see myself occasionally. <laughs> This is what I want to give you tonight. I want to preach for a few minutes. And Miss, Miss, Miss Melissa, you may have this in your notes. On getting the clay out of the way. That's what we need to get the clay out of the way. Now, I'm not, listen, I'm not near as spiritual as our pastor, but I maybe sensed a little tightness when the service started. Just a tad bit of tightness. And so I knew right then my, my bug message was not going to fly. It's got to be pretty loose to preach that one. Yeah. So it was a little tight. So I said, Lord, 
We just got to get the clay out of the way. See, if we get the clay out of the way, then everything else is going to be hunky-dory. Now stay with me. When you come to the house of God, normally you'll find three types of people. You'll find those that hinder. You think about verse number four, it was so pressed. They, there were so many there, they couldn't bring their friend right into the door at where Jesus was standing and preaching. They couldn't get, they was kind of oppressed. They were kind of hindered. So you'll find people sometimes when you get to the house of God, if you're not careful, they'll just hinder your spirit. Hinders can block the Lord from blessing the service. Hinders can also increase the burden for those that are trying to get help to the Lord or from the Lord. You got those that hinder, you got those that help. Thank God for those that's willing to help. You think about these old four boys. They went and got their buddy. They had to carry them to where Jesus was. Have you ever thought about this? I don't know how big that fellow was. He might have been kind of tiny like Brother Tommy here. I don't know. Or he might have been kind of weighty like myself. But can you imagine what if one of those men had to drop their corner of the bed? Boy, it'd have been a struggle, wouldn't it? It'd have been kind of difficult to get to. So they were working together in unity. They were working together in one accord. You got the helpers. They see that everything works together like a well old machine. Thank God for the good helpers around here. You got those that hinder, those that help. And then you got those that harp on everything. Those Pharisees was harping and said, hey, who can forgive sins but God? Well, he was God. Why you so, Listen, you got those that harp about everything that's going on. Well, why did, the, why did the preacher sing only three? Why didn't he sing seven? Why didn't he have the adult choir up there? Why this and why? People just harp about everything. Now watch this. Getting the clay out of the way. Let me get to it. That clay... See those tiles. When they, I'm going to be honest with you. When they took that roof off of that fellow's house, that wasn't a real Christian thing to do. No. <laughs> I mean, you think about it. That wasn't a real Christ-like thing to be tearing a man's roof off. But that was a necessity. They had to. Don't, I wouldn't advise you to do that unless God really put it on your heart but to do it. But see, that house... It didn't have shingles and metal roofs like we had. Now, y'all know that. It had sticks on it. And on those sticks, they probably placed some sod, some grass, and it had mingled with clay. So they had to rip all that clay off. Well, in the Bible, we know that clay is a type of the flesh. Good job. Type, we had one noted. Type of the flesh. And if we don't get our flesh out of the way, if we don't set self down, if we don't learn to get rid of this old Adamic nature on a day-by-day -day basis, Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If we don't crucify this old flesh daily, hey, we'll not see God like we ought to see Now stay with me. Again, that clay represents this old flesh. Remember that. When you get the clay out of the way, you can examine the person of the Lord more clearly. He'll become more discernible. You see, they was ripping that clay roof off. Jesus was down there preaching. Now they could hear a muffled sound they couldn't see him at all. Y'all know what a tall is. Couldn't see him at all. They could hear him somewhat. It was muffled. But they began to, he began to, them boys began to rip that roof off. And when they got that roof off, the Lord become more clear to them. Remember my last point about the little outline I gave you? It's about seeing things clear. When they got that old flesh, they get, we get that old flesh out of the way. We can always see the Lord more clear. They got that roof off of there and there he was. They saw it. They heard him and they saw him. He was more discernible to them to notice something else. He also became more desirable. 
I'm going to tell you something about seeing the Lord. It makes the journey a whole lot more bearable. Some of you has felt like a bug on the windshield this week out this working in this hot weather and out having to go to your job. But do you know what makes the journey more bearable, Brother Mike? It's knowing Him. It's seeing Him for who He is. But we got to get this old flesh out of the way. That's not an easy thing to do. You know the one thing I really, I've talked to the Lord about this a lot and He's not answered me on it. But I said, Lord, I, I just wish you would have let this old flesh got saved when the rest of me got in. Yeah. But you know what? It didn't. Right. So until I get home to be with him, I've got to learn to crucify right. this old flesh. Right. Flesh will give you a lot of trouble. Sure. Notice something in verse 5. Their faith was exhibited. Yeah. And then we find his forgiveness was extended. Good. Hey. Now, when our faith's exhibited and His forgiveness is extended, then our faults and failures will begin to dwindle. Yeah. Our faults and failures in life. Listen, we all make mistakes. We all fall, fall short of what we should be each and every day. But we find whenever we get those things out of the way, Get this old flesh out of the way. Not only do we find that, that we can that get the clay out of the way, we can now enter into the presence of where the Lord's at. Now I want to show you something here. When you get this old clay out of the way, Brother James, our burdens will get removed. But you gotta get the clay out of the way. Those burdens will get removed. I'm gonna tell you what, a lot of a lot of things in life. I don't know what you need is tonight, but you might be here and you might just need to remove that old clay of fear. Fear of what it's going to mean to put God first in your life. Now, that's not an easy thing to do sometimes. But putting God, you may have that clear of failure. Have that old clay of failure you need to get rid of. You're worried about failing and, and letting God down. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you will. I'm going to go ahead and break it to you. You can get that old clay of failure and get it out of the way. Because you sometime in life will let him down. Every one of us in here can take our halos off and put them under the pew. Because no matter how close we get to God, there's times in our life when we'll fail him. We'll let him down. We'll fall short of what we should be. Maybe you need to remove that old clay of fault finding. Oh man, it's used to a whole lot easier to get that get that little splinter out of Brother John, it, yeah. Brother John's eye, than it is Brother Jordan. You to get that two before out of yours. Yeah. Right. See, and that's the way we see things in life. A lot of times, it's a lot easier to see other people's fault. Yeah. Well, I wonder why so and so ain't ain't worshiping tonight like they usually do. Oh, well, that ain't got a thing to do with you getting the clay out of the way and you getting to God. Yeah. Right. Might have been having a bad day. Right. Might, have, might have had a day, praise God, when everything was going wrong. Right. How many ever had a day when everything started right but it ended up wrong? Yeah. Those things happen. Yeah. Might be that old clay of fault finding. It could be that old clay of failures. It could be the clay of fear. Or it could be the clay of familiar, what I call familiarity. Yeah. You know something I thought about Peter? When he stepped out of the boat, and I say, could God be the glory for Peter getting out of the boat? Yeah. But do you know when Peter started to sink, Brother Greg, he was in familiar water. What about that? Mm -hmm. And do you know how close he was to the Lord when he started sinking? He was so close, the Bible says that the Lord reached down. That's, that's pretty close. He was in familiar water. See, we can get real familiar with what's going on around here if we're not careful. If we don't pay close attention, we're liable to start going and drifting and sinking. He was in familiar water. If we want to see the Lord, we got to get some of that old clay out of the way. Something else, you can release your burden. You also find you dismiss those burdens, but you can also discover your blessing. Yeah, what's your blessing, preacher? Well, you got to deny this flesh. You got to get rid of those things. We want revival. Yeah. We really want to see revival sure. continue. Sure. If my people which are called by my name yeah. shall humble themselves. Yeah. That's a big hurdle. Yeah. Right there, humble. Yeah. 
humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That old flesh is wicked. I'm going to tell you right now, you can doll it up. Miss Sidney, bless her heart, they was talking about makeup, or her and the ladies was. Her and my wife, good, glad my wife and Allie's with me. I meant to mention that. It's always good to have them. But they was talking about makeup. And Miss Sidney said, You know, you could use some makeup, preacher. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh. That truth hurts, don't it? I went back to the motel room to squall like a baby. No, I did. Where in the world I come up with that at? You can listen, you can't you can dial that old flesh up, you can put perfume on it, cologne on it. You can fix it up, pretty it up, put it in a suit, put it in a nice dress, put it in some, put it in some fine apparel, but I'm gonna tell you what flesh is flesh. And it's that old rotten flesh, it's that old Adamic nature. It's those things in us that, praise God, we may need to turn loose of, we may, may need to let go of, we may, may need to clear the deck. Why, preacher? Because when we do, we find we can discover our blessing. But we see we can examine the person of the Lord. We can enter into the presence of the Lord. But we can also experience the power of the Lord when you get this flesh out of the way. Now you think about this, Brother Bob. They pull that roof off. Got, the, got that old clay out of the way. And when they look down, they can see Him clearly. Why, wow, that's Jesus. Well, they just didn't stop there. They let their friend right down in the midst. They saw him clear, and then they got closer. That closeness, that one-on-one -on -one relationship. Where you get along with God, and I talk to God a lot going up and down the road. And boy, God can point things out in my life, and He does more than my wife does. She's a good wife. She does it in a good way. Don't miss. Don't take that wrong now. I don't want to get in the doghouse when on vacation. <laughs> but God will begin to point out certain things in my life. Sure. And I'm going to tell you, Brother Ray Aiken told me something one time that has really stuck with me and it's become more of a reality to me in, in the last few months of my life than anything else. I called old Brother Ray one time before he, he checked out and went home to be with the Lord. And I asked him... He always... How many of you know Brother Ray Aiken? Yeah. You know I always talk... Yeah. Like that. I called him. I said, Brother Ray, what you doing? He said, Oh, just sitting here. I said, What you doing sitting there? He said, Getting ready for the judgment. Boy, that thing pierced my heart, buddy. I said, Getting ready for the judgment. He said, Yeah. I said, What do you mean, Brother Ray? He said, I've been asking the Lord to show me sins that I forgot to confess so I can confess them before I get to the judgment. See, getting the clay out of the way, it just doesn't involve getting rid of those things and doing away with those things in our life that are evident. But it's also asking the Lord to go back deep down in the crevice of our heart and start breaking. And it's not pleasant. And you can't do it in one sitting. You can't do it in one time alone with Him in prayer. You can't do it talking to Him going down the road in one conversation. It's a lifestyle. It's an everyday commitment. It's when we come to God and we say, Lord, I sure have blown it. And I don't know about you, but I have blown it in my life many times. I've said things I shouldn't say. Yeah. I've snapped off at my wife when I shouldn't have. Now, I know none of you men's never done that, so let me get in the doghouse, okay? I've snapped off and said things I shouldn't have said. I've said harsh things to my children I shouldn't have said. I've been a little short with some of them people at the store that I shouldn't have been short with. You know, there's times in, since we're started going through this Chinese virus, 
that I've not acted Christ-like. Nothing against Chinese. I love them, but that's what it is. It comes from China. I'm like, I'm like the good president said, Donald Trump, where are you at? Yeah. Trump? I'm like the good president said. It's Chinese. That woman said, why you call it? Because it comes from China. I mean, that's common thing. Yeah. But do you realize there's been times, but Denny, since I since all this has happened, I have not been Christ like. Boy, you mean put on a mask. What? You got to put on a mask. I thought it was in America. Yeah, right. See, it's those little things. They built was they start building up. I'm gonna tell you, I felt something when I said something about harsh words to our kids. Yeah. To our spouse. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you something about that husband. He's made totally different than you are. I used to ask the Lord. I said, Lord, why didn't you let me and Miss Cindy just, you know, be the same? You know what he told me? It wouldn't be fun. <laughs> and if we was the same, couldn't you? I'm not near as pretty as Miss Cindy. As my wife. Yeah. Well, put it like that. Amen, Amen or not? <laughs> but getting this old clay out of the way. I think that's a lot of our problem. And listen, it's not a bad thing, but it's something that's got to be dealt with. Clay gets in the way. Things do happen. But our Lord doesn't change. Right. Same God took care of us a year ago is going to take care of us today. Right. Same God that was alive and well before the Chinese virus is still God today. Right. You know what our problem is? It's our old flesh. Right. Our old flesh. Listen, we might as well deal with it as we have to and as we can because that's what's going to take to see real revival. Yeah. See, revival is, of course, getting saved. That's that is that is a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Lord help me. That's what? That's evidence of revival. I think what I showed you in the book of Acts was evidence of revival. You see, revival isn't really a series of meetings. Revival is what happens after the meeting's over. When somebody turns the lights out and we have to walk out in a real world and face the real devil and fight real battles and have real heartache and suffer through tragedy and go through trials and go through torments and fight things that our flesh would love to just cave into. Turn it all over to God. I believe with all my heart that we want real revival. I believe that. And I know God knows that. But you see, there are some areas in our life we're going to have to deal with. Yeah, okay. Now, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I don't know what, what it may be in your life. I, don't, I know one thing the Bible says, you did run well. Yeah. Who? Yeah. Who? Not what? Yeah. But who? Yeah. Hath hindered thee? Sure. What could it be in your life that's hindering you Son, from getting that old clay out of the way? You get that cloud away, you can see him more clear, you can get more closer. And like this young man, like this one sick of the palsy, he received the cleansing. That's what yeah. we need. Yeah. Is a good cleansing within yeah. our hearts and lives. Yeah. Preacher, could I have Miss Renee is it come to the piano? There she is. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'm just going to be, I give you my heart tonight. This is not really what I'd studied to preach at all. But I gave you what was on my heart. And I believe God sent it. Now, can we get the clay out of the way tonight? Can we turn loose of that? Which may be hindering in the service, may be hindering in seeing God really move. I'm going to tell you, be honest with you, she's played softly. It's kind of difficult to even say some of these little kids could have anything in their heart, but I'm going to tell you, it's not difficult to say that us adults could. Are you jealous of something? Are you feeling anger towards somebody? Are you bitter about something? 
Are you questioning God on why? I'll go ahead and tell you, I live by this. God's never done nothing bad to me and He's never done nothing bad to you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed, many in the altar. Maybe you want here tonight, you need to slip my hand up and say, Preacher, pray for me. Pray for me. i got some things I've got to get out of my life. I've got some things I've got. Thank you. All over the bed. got some things I've got to turn loose of. Well, it starts tonight. Turn loose of it. Start letting go of it. Turn it over to God. If you need forgiveness from Him, ask forgiveness. He's plenteous in it. He'll grant it. He'll give it. He's a forgiving God. Repent of it. And turn and go from it. Thank you for that hand. Is there another preacher? Thank you. God bless you. God sees that hand. I don't know what might be hindering you tonight. But God does and you do. I believe you do. So you just need to come. Turn it over. to really want to see God sweep across this county. And here in Florence, Kentucky. Is there, you got a loved one you need to see saved. You got some stray ones in your family that's gone astray out in the far country. You need to see them restored back in the place where they should be with God. Why don't you go to Him? Why don't you turn it over to Him? Let go of whatever may be a hindering you tonight. Give it to God. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.